Welcome to Clash Course. Today we have Theo Lowe, our champion in MST Clash Bash. Um, not only is he our champion, he's actually our newest member of um, of the Clash Committee. Super excited to have him. We uh, have been stepping out, trying to reach out to different members, bring them in. And so he's been a great help um, in as we're getting ready to do actually some cool bands, which we want to announce on here. You'll see that in the next couple of weeks. But <laughs> Theo knows what I'm talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. I always like to introduce people. Um, I want to know, when did you get into uh, Fab? Because I always find it interesting uh, how long people have been playing. So I got into Fab um, in uh, right before Monarch. Um, I remember looking at the Premiere Play announcement when they had the, the four-tier system. Um, and I went, oh, this is really cool. And at the time I was playing, I was playing Magic and I was pretty into the Magic competitive scene. And I was like, the Magic competitive scene was dying a little bit back then. Um, but then Fab, they announced this this tiered play system. And I was like, oh, this is, you know, this is a new thing. And I looked at the game um, and they had events at my local game store. And so I hopped in and it's been like that ever since. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, what, four years? Is that four years? I think it's four years. So uh, yeah, twenty part of year twenty twenty one. Mm -hmm. So it was so, yeah. it was quite a while ago. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't play a lot um, for the the first first couple of years I played, but at this point I've been playing a lot more. So yeah, mm -hmm. I that was almost the exact same time I got into it. It wasn't until we couldn't play at the LGS because of you know pandemic oh, and yeah, all that COVID. until like. It was it was just before Aria dropped. We played mm -hmm. for like a couple months and then Aria dropped. So like, I was playing on tabletop similar. You probably were too at that time period. Yeah, I think that's the only way we <laughs> yeah, could. that was yeah, that was a little jank. But <laughs> now we have Talishar. <laughs> Talishar. Uh, people still use it though because Talishar can screw up sometimes, and you can use current cards. Mm -hmm. and they, they actually keep mm -hmm. it up to date. So I know some yeah. people actually really like it. Um, mm -hmm. Once in a while, I'll do a draft on tabletop as well. Yes, that is what you can do because they took out draft elsewhere, so that's always fun. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was it was an interesting time. Actually, it's funny that yeah. you mentioned that time period because I think um, I had a lot of fun. I don't know about you, but I had a lot of fun with the online community at that point in time because everything was online, right? We all were in mm -hmm. Discord mm -hmm. and we're like, "Hey, I want to jump in." Can somebody, I remember, I went into Discord. I was like, "Can someone teach me this? I want to try Dory. I have no idea how to play this mm. game." Can you teach me how to play on Dory? So mm -hmm. someone literally got on Tabletop Simulator and, and taught me how to play. Um, oh, I, I I didn't engage much with the Discord. I engaged a little bit with the uh, the subreddit. Um, mm -hmm. And there used to be two subreddits, and now they've condensed. But uh, <laughs> I I I engaged. That was that was what I did, um, which was it was a little awkward. Uh, there was. Uh, it was just a lot of like art stuff mostly, but mm -hmm. um, that was kind of the way I engaged with the online community. I did that and I did Facebook for buying and selling. Like I mm, always did yeah. Facebook for buying and selling cards. Cause back then, like it was hard to get a hold of cards. Cards were expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I always did it there. I actually ended up dropping that cause like the Facebook community, there's like it's several, it just got so toxic. I was like, mm. I don't need this. Right, yeah. I'm just here to buy and sell cards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, one of the first friends I made while playing Fab, um, I think when I uh, he asked me for like my Facebook account. Yes. Um, and I'm I'm young. I don't I don't I don't think I had I don't <laughs> I may still not have a Facebook account, but I was like, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have one. Um, and so yeah, that's hilarious. But yeah, so Fab definitely spread very well online in those first mm -hmm. couple of years, yeah. Yeah, so I said to say, like, part of one of the reasons why I started when when Man State handed off Clash over to me, uh, that was kind of one of my goals was to kind of recreate that online community. Because Clash, I mean, like, most LGS is like, we actually have one of my LGS, we get a handful of people. Um, mm -hmm. and, that, and I run it and it's buddies of mine. So like, they're like, yeah, just do your thing. Um, that, that owned the place. Um, and so that was one of the goals is when we got in, when I was like, okay, we're going to take this over. I'm going to make a, you know, start a committee 
uh because you know i can't do this forever um mm-hmm. and this is such a great mode who knows if it'll ever be officially supported but it's probably i think it's one of the best ways to play personally is i wanted to kind of recreate that community mm. but like the the good part of the community because there were some times yeah yeah, yeah yeah oh definitely but yeah but the <laughs> clash community as we have it right now is that's a it's a great community it's it's fairly like tight knit, but it's continually growing, um, mm-hmm. and that's the way we want to keep it. Some people are completely silent; other people talk on and off. I'm always in there. I try to respond to everybody. I probably respond too much, so um, <laughs> usually that's why. There's usually like comment, Nathaniel, comment, Nathaniel. You know, yeah, I want to keep <laughs> cover. Sometimes but, I want yeah, to keep definitely the conversation keep it alive. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so that's like that's my goal, and so that's what I try to do. And it, and it's one of those things like. Well, that was my goal it's really cool to see the community kind of rise up and do it like i'm just there are lots of times where i feel like i'm just a fly in the wall and everyone's just chatting away and and i like it that way um and, and so like that was kind of the goal of like doing the online tournaments and our clash bash of like hey that was a really cool thing that ethan did let's continue that but let's continue that for the community right the mm-hmm. initial clash bash was he wanted to get the mode out there, so we invited all these streamers so people would know, like, hey, Az is playing, or you know, so-and-so's playing. I know Elaine was in it. Um, one of our commentators, Elaine, was in it. I'm not sure if Mo Bogsley was in it or not. Um, but a lot of cool content creators, and it got the name out there, and so now we've just been trying to build that community up um, and just make a safe space for people to just jam games, because a lot of us are busy, but hey, we can mm-hmm. take ten minutes in a week and throw a game down real quick. So, talk to me a little bit. I always find it fascinating too. Like, how did you find out about Clash? What what was it that drew you into it? And then, like, when were you kind of actively, you know, participating in in, in it? Was it local community? Was it just like, hey, they're doing the Clash Flash? Let me jump in. What did that look like for you? Uh, so yeah, so Clash for me was a little, it was a little awkward, um, at the start, uh, because when, uh, when it first started, when Mansant did his, like, first Clash Bash and people were uh, pretty excited about it, um, there was a local community, um, of a few people, like, probably like 10 or so people who all built Clash decks. That, that's um, more than a I few built... people. Okay, well, yeah, all right, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, so so we all had our clash decks uh and every so often um like you know it'd be like in the in the weekly rotation we'd go cc draft clash Mm -hmm. um and uh so so i had i had clash icelander Mm -hmm. um which i thought was really fun uh i never bought a storm striders uh yes i kind of got into cc icelander a little bit i played her a decent amount on talishar but i never bought a storm striders and i was like i want some paper icelander gameplay and so I, I bought into Icelander, um, just the Clash deck, and obviously Clash is super budget friendly. You know, you can build. I think uh, my deck must be less than you know thirty or forty bucks. Your your probably, deck, I have it up right here, only. and it says your Icelander deck is ten dollars. All right, well, okay, yeah. So <laughs> not not even that, but so I I put that together, um, and then uh, Clash uh, at a local level kind of dried up a little bit in my scene. Um, which was a little surprising, but everyone kind of moved on to playing a lot of CC. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so then I found out about the online uh, tournament. I saw your your YouTube channel, um, and I saw those videos, and I was like, "This is you know, this is cool." And uh, it was kind of a funny story. One of my friends, um, Row Two, actually won the last mm-hmm. Clash yep. Bash. Um, and so yeah, so I saw him, and I was like, "Oh, that's you know." But uh, yeah, and then I got into it this season um, with the Clash Bash. Mm-hmm. Yep, and, and Rotu's actually, he not only won it, but he was one of our founding members in the committee. So, so far we've had two committee members. Yeah, I think you, you kind of joined after, I think. Um, but it's just kind of fun. Apparently, if you win, you get to be on the committee. Apparently, that's the thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but he said, we, we um, you know, he joined fairly early on because we started mm-hmm. out with myself. I said, you know, who's interested in Clash? just on Twitter, like, let me know. Oh, okay. I need yeah. people. Um, and so, Rotu, Alex, uh, Teppa, those are all members in there. Uh, we also have Carlos GG. He's a little bit inactive right now, but he's, uh, you know, often 
off doing his own thing. You've probably seen Carlos G. He does um, mm. all the streams like in Spain and stuff. So all those like uh, callings and stuff that is in Spain, he's been involved in those. Uh, great, great community member. Um, they do a lot in Europe. Um, the right now, I think they're they're very focused on the YouTube channel. I mean, Carlina, um, as well as uh, they do a lot of those streams for for LSS and and everything. So he's busy, uh, but he does a lot of translating for us. He actually translated mm-hmm. the Clash document into Spanish and stuff. So um, a lot of interesting, interesting stuff. I I think one of the things that I've appreciated um, in Clash is there's a lot of underground stuff that we don't hear about. Like I just heard about today uh, that there's a I don't know where in Brazil, but there's a pretty big Clash community in Brazil that they mm. play pretty regularly because it's so cheap and it's hard to get cards mm. down there. Um, yeah. and so that's like their regular rotation is is Clash. Mm. I was like, oh, that's mm. cool. Um, yeah, and the the Clash Bash as well is is very international. Um, yes, like there's people from Poland, Canada, and obviously U.S. But yeah, lots of places. Surprisingly, I haven't had too much trouble scheduling games, though. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, n- neither. I I don't think I've had any problems, but yeah. Like, I, I would think it, I, I have a lot more flexibility just because I, I work from home. So it's kind of like, oh, let me take 10 minutes of my day and play Clash game if I need to. So I can hit those Europeans pretty easily. But I haven't, like, it's not even come up. It hasn't been a struggle. Whereas I, I've done, like, Sorcery League and other places like that. And it's been a struggle to to get them lined up. So that's been, I've actually been pleasantly surprised. Um, and I'm glad to see just kind of the community play. Um, Kind of our, our goal for the Clash Bash is to make it as casual and friendly as possible. <laughs> like, that is the ultimate goal is like, hey, let's just chill down, play play a game. And then, like, the top eight is a little bit more, a um, little bit more competitive. Uh, but we like to do things slightly different in the top eight. And this was the first time you've played this way, I think, Theo, because last year we played this full-time and we dropped it for the regular mm-hmm. season because it was a lot. It's a lot of players playing in paper. So what we do is we do best of three. We bring two heroes, and we have to win with both of the heroes. So once you win with a hero, they, you can't use them anymore, and you have to do that. So we brought two heroes. Talk to me a little bit about you brought... Icelander, as you talked about your love for Icelander, which I also have that same love, <laughs> and I have that same problem you have, where I don't have Storm Striders. Uh, I just had a skirmish LL, and I was like, "Oh, I want to play Icelander." Oh wait, I don't have Storm Striders. Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I got stuck on Lexi, which was fine because mm. um, I love Lexi. But so you brought Icelander, you brought Ira to this top two to, to as your two heroes. So I want to get number one. I want to hear about why you brought those two. I think you have a love for Icelander, so that sounds about right. Uh, and number two, how was your experience? Because this is kind of a, a semi-unique way to play it um, in there. So talk to me a little bit about how was your experience in that? Did that feel okay to you? Um, and then why did you pick these two? Uh, so, yeah. So I guess starting with the the best of three format, I really I really think that's a that's a great idea. Um, especially with the two decks, that should almost be, that should probably be how they run blitz skirmishes at this point. <laughs> um, like, like that eliminates a ton of the variants, but it also, uh, means that you, it, 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 it gets some more player skill in, like you don't just have to be really good at one deck. Um, you have to know multiple decks pretty well. Uh, and so I, I, yeah, I really enjoy that format. Um, and so as for Icelander, uh, I think. Uh, Icelander is probably um, I would consider to be like the best deck in the format. Uh, it's it's a little debatable. Her win record is not super high, um, but I think she's she's also a little trickier than some of the other heroes. Mm-hmm. Um, a deck like Ira is a little simpler, um, similar with something like Bravo maybe. Uh, yep. But I feel like Icelander's power is just super high. Um, either Ice Vein. Uh, plays, but we can get into specific cards later. And then, uh, as for Ira, I like... Uh, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Mask of Momentum gameplay um, mm-hmm. in Blitz and in CC. 
uh, how you kind of, you turn like this aggression into almost a control style where you're forcing your opponent to block with cards um, or else you get this like really positive effect. Yep. Uh, and so, so in Clash, uh, we don't exactly have Mask of Momentum, but we have Mask of Three Tails, which is good enough. Uh, and so I thought it's it's I'm good like, for the the low health format, right? Like mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. still force your opponent to block if they don't want to see it. In fact, I actually lost the game against Benji because I forgot about mm. that mask. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone always forgets about Three Tails, uh, <laughs> but I I think. The Kadachis are super powerful, um, and Three Tails is just another good way of exploiting those Kadachis. Also, without a lot of armor, um, mm -hmm. Three Tails gets better, and so uh, I felt like Iro was a solid pick. Um, she has some bad matchups, but a lot of them can be teched for, um, and so yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I ever actually has a bad matchup. I'm going to be honest. So I oh, have your <laughs> Icelander deck here. Um, I have your Icelander deck here. I think this mm -hmm. all looks fairly standard to me. I love Glacial Horns. This is probably one of my yeah. favorite cards in almost oh, yeah. anything. I think I run this in my Ultim. Ultim is like armor everywhere except for Glacial Horns. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a phenomenal card. It's one of my favorite cards in here, especially like low health formats. Just that one yeah. turn to lock down their arsenal. Yeah. That can be the difference between winning and not. Um, so this to me looks pretty standard here. Uh, is there anything yeah, you want to talk about? There's one change that I have that is uh that's a little substantial. I'm not playing uh Ironhide um mm -hmm. in the boots. Some I people that. were on Ironhide in the boots, uh, but I think that so. Uh, one of the matchups I wanted to have a lot of play into uh, was Reinar. Um, mm -hmm. I know Rotu is a big Reinar fan, uh, yep. and so I was I wanted to be suitably teched for game into yes. game. And I felt like uh, s sometimes I've I've seen it a lot happening in in Clash is you pop Spellfire Cloak and then you pay for Ironhide Boots. Mm -hmm. um, and if I I think if you're doing that gameplay. Uh, you've almost wasted your Spellfire Cloak for kind of not great value because for, for basically plus one at that point. Because if you yeah ran Iron yeah. Rot legs, you'd be fine. Mm -hmm. Where otherwise uh, you're getting plus three value off uh, Spellfire Cloak if you're mm -hmm. going to play an Emeritus Scalding or an Ice Bolt. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not a big fan of the Iron Hide boot, and so I just played Iron Rot, and then I got another sideboard slot from that. Yeah, yep, nice. Thanks. Yep, that makes mm -hmm. sense to me. I did see that, and I was wondering about that because I'm pretty sure I run. I typically run Iron Hide. I actually mm -hmm. usually do it where it's like I play a zero cost out, so then I can ping with oh, uh, yes. Waning Moon, and then I can block with my mm -hmm. Iron Hide. That's yeah. typically the way I, I do that. I don't think I've ever yeah. used it because I'm the same way as you. If I'm popping Spellfire Cloak from Iron Hide, I feel like I'm losing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, the only so Winter's Bite is often I'm just going to play Winter's Bite on my turn, mm -hmm. um, and that's the that's the zero cost Arctic Incarceration. I think is the only mm -hmm. other oh Brain Freeze as well, but Arctic Incarceration uh, is relevant with the boots. But yeah, I, yep. I often I don't I haven't been playing Arctic that much. I, I that's often the first thing I pitch uh, when yeah. I need something to pitch. Uh, I like I like then, it in red, but we don't run it in red. In yeah, standard. yeah, no. Uh, and then everything else is pretty standard. I was on uh, the big five damage destroy a frozen ally one mm -hmm. or frozen arsenal. Um, can't think of what it's named, but uh, I cut those for more D reacts. Yep. Um, I see. That. I think so everything done here. else. So you're is... running. 34 cards in your main board. So you got a flex mm -hmm. spot of six down here. So I see we got Fate for mm -hmm. Scenes, Ice Bite, Scar for Scar, Simclo, and Wounded Bull. So when do you, are you using those more for like, hey, if I'm playing against some Dominates or high powered guys, I'm doing Simple, like my D Rex? Is that what we're looking at? Uh, yeah. So, so Bravo is um, a relevantly good enough deck to have four D Rex for the same with mm -hmm. a Reinar. Um, 
also to some extent Azalea, but yeah, I think just having four D reacts instead of two mm-hmm. is kind of necessary for those matchups. Yep. So I like Ice Bind. I actually I like to run Ice Bind. I think it's a fantastic mm-hmm. card. Mm-hmm. It's a great, you know, zero for three. Um, yeah. Kind of trigger. You can get Waning Moon for two if you want to. Um, mm-hmm. But it's just a, it's just efficient to just kind of play it out. So I, I I'm a huge fan of Ice Bind. Um, I actually and I, and this is this is maybe going against the grain. I actually don't love Scar for Scar. Um. Mm. So I'm curious to get your take on that because I always feel like I'm wasting. There's always like a waste, or I want to get rid of it, or I wish it was more powerful because I have enough cards to pitch for it. Okay. Um. So yeah. So Scar is often uh. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's probably the most blocked card, which is a little awkward because the two block <laughs> ab- above all the just good three blocks. But yeah, yeah, scar for a scar is is awkward. Oftentimes, what I what I happen to do is it's just a two, it's. It, I don't care about the go again. It's just a zero for four, and then I arsenal mm-hmm. the last card. But the the go again is uh is fine. It's best paired with Aether Ice Vein. Mm-hmm. Um. But like Scar for a Scar into Wounded Bull is just huge value. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, I think it's it's just about good enough to make the deck. Yeah, because I found that I end up dropping it for a bigger attack. So I have I have mm, like a two okay. like the Frost Wolf, whatever it's called. I have the Frost Wolf, or I have like another three yeah. attack in there, like something like that. Because um, mm-hmm. like Scar for a Scar to me makes sense. I, um, in adult heroes right like i feel like it makes more sense because you have a little more time you could set it up if you want to you could you know like you said a zero for four because you you know did a crazy you know do that zero for four and then drop like i don't know something something big on them um it, whereas this i feel like if you're just going seven damage when they have 20 life that's a lot of damage <laughs> yeah yeah that is that is relevant um i think uh i like it for the there's a decent amount of aggro matchups um mm-hmm. uh, one of the most popular ones is well obviously ira but also dash yeah. yep. um and dash wants to play like uh dash if they go you know deal you 12 on the first uh, well probably not more like yeah. 10 10 on the yeah. first turn you go to eight uh, you scar for a scar into either ace, either ace, ace, ice ice main or or wounded ball. Um, they're down to eight now. You can uh, now you can block with three cards, arsenal a card, mm-hmm. um, and then you get them down to one, and then you can probably kill them the next turn. And yeah. So I think into aggro matchup, scar for a scar is like pretty solid. But yeah, gotcha. it, it is it is a possible cut. Um, another thing. That I, I, just, I was list. just more of curious because yeah, I, no, I haven't had great luck with it. I've ended mm-hmm. up cutting it. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, another thing is the winter's grasps. Mm-hmm. Uh, Not a lot of people were running winter's grasp. Uh, instead, yeah. they were running uh, the one that it's um, it's when you hit to make a frostbite. Can't think mm-hmm. of what it's called, but it's a one cost. But it's essentially just to trigger Waning Moon. Um, yes, yeah, 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 I know what you're talking mm-hmm. about. Yeah, I don't think I've ever attacked with Winter's Grasp. Uh, it is an ice block card that pitches for a blue. Basically, it's basically for like me. your ice amulet replacement. Uh-huh. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so just because it's an ice card, like uh, having either Ice Vein Fuse, having Ice Eternal Fuse, but also just having a three block is very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a lot yeah. of situations where I just want to block. So yeah, I'm not sure if I'm even running that. I'll have to relook at my list because that mm-hmm. feels good. I don't know why I wouldn't run that. Those. So it's really interesting because um, you you've been around for a while, so you remember Arya. Like, mm-hmm. there's only one set of cards in each element that is a three block, and yes. every single one is actually pertinent to just put in for that for that three block. Yeah, yeah, and the yeah the fuse ability. Uh yeah, just because I have a lot of fuse cards, I have ten, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so at that point, I'm just like, Winter's Grass is 
fine. Uh, and I can always use, I can always just pitch it to Waning Moon. Mm-hmm. Um, if I have like a, like a three card hand with Grasp, Ice Vein, uh, and another blue, um, then, or another, you know, another random card, then I can pitch the random card to Ice Vein, use Grasp, and then Moon. Yep. Uh, so it never has to, it never has to end up in my arsenal. <laughs> um, yeah. You can get it away for sure. Uh-huh. No, that's So that's uh-huh. one of the things that I enjoy about Icelander in Clash is the fact that I can skip my Ice Eternals into Frox decks. I can still do my, my combo in there. Yes. I can still do a decent amount of control, right? But I don't have uh, like channel like Frigid or things like that that are you know, mm-hmm. super... Yeah, or Storm, Storm Striders as oh, Storm Striders, yeah, up. yes. So like, there's uh-huh. there's elements of this that you are definitely missing, right? If you're mm-hmm. playing Blitz mm-hmm. or CC, but being a low health format, we just need you just need a little bit of control um, in order to do it. And Aether Ice Vein is just ridiculous. Com- the, probably the best common in the game, I would think. Um, and so that's one of the things I appreciate is I get the full feel of Icelander, even though I don't get that like that kill at the end from Star yeah, Striders. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But I still get the he still she does so much work with with the waning moon that um you, you kind of don't need it. Yeah, I think uh you're probably right on the Aether Ice Man is the best common in the game. Uh I can't think of its actual numbers are Horrible. not well, there. So, so it's weird because uh, if you assume that you're taking a card with it, uh, then its numbers are like on rate in this strange way. If you go, because uh, the red is it's five. Uh, yeah, but they're so if they pitch a blue, then it's four plus. Uh, it's four plus a card for two cards, mm-hmm. which is the same rate as uh, a three for seven. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem is that it it. Punt it, it forces them to dump a card, um, and that's often super punishing, especially in, in Clash, where a lot of these decks want to play large hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, Azalea, Reinar, Bravo, Ira, to some aspect, want to play just the biggest hands they possibly can. Yeah, the only The only hero that I've ever played that doesn't struggle, not necessarily struggle, but f- like where it feels like I have the upper hand against Icelanders, Vincent, surprisingly. Mm-hmm. Maybe that shouldn't be surprising because I get free cards. <laughs> so it's like she'll like mm-hmm. ice me. I'm like, I don't care. I'll just pay through it. I get a room gate three. Don't care. Um, but like, uh, so that's one of the things that's kind of fun about this is you get like weird heroes like that that aren't, well, maybe they're about to be good, but aren't great um, and can go into... Mm-hmm. Probably mm-hmm. the best hero. Yeah, I, I that's also really shown by uh, Fatigue Briar, which seems that you're pretty excited about. I play Fatigue Briar, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I did win against Icelander with Fatigue Briar, but um, I don't. Did we play? I don't think we played. I think I think we I think we played one game afterwards um, where I comboed you for like. Yes. Uh, I comboed you for the max I could combo you, I think. Yes. And that was the only time with Fatigue Briar. Because, yeah, that's right. I think we played and you're like, let's try this again. And we're like, okay, let's go. Because uh, because you're like, I think I should have comboed you. And it's like, yeah, probably. Um, and, yeah, you comboed uh, me for crazy. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. it was just... So, Icelander and Clash has a very important ability to just dis- destroy Fatigue decks. Where in... Uh, in a format like Commoner, Icelander is still good, but you can fatigue her so easily because uh, essentially the max damage you can deal with Icelander is about uh, 11 per turn cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, can be slightly more, but it's maxed at about 11 the best possible. It could be like <laughs> uh, Scar plus Wounded Bull plus Blue Ice Vein plus uh plus uh staff so that's mm-hmm. that's 18 so yeah but with the combo with the specialization specifically Icelander has a lot of power yes because yeah I think you had I think you had both Frox Hexes on me and then you Ice Eternaled for ridiculous yes. and I tried to I did the best I could 
I did as much as I could, and I just, mm-hmm. I, I think I had like three blues in it too, so I was able to like. Block yeah, the time yeah, I, yeah. I had to pitch stack the ice eternal, and that was uh, so it was ten pitch because I also broke the chest. It yeah, that's right. Five, five frostbites plus five plus uh, ten off the two frost taxes. Yeah, so, so yeah. I, I blocked as much as I could, uh-huh. and then I blocked as much as I could at the yeah. all of frost <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, Icelander and Clash is is kind of it's that's but that is really a lot of the appeal of Clash, uh, where Commoner is like this. You know, you you just if you just block out Icelander, she cannot beat you. So that's that's kind of cool about Clash. I've never, one thing I've, I think, especially since Ice, so Ice, when Ice Amulet uh, got banned uh, in Commoners, so we follow Commoners bans, um, at least for now. And um, I honestly didn't think it was going to make that much of a difference. And truly in the way I played Icelander, it didn't. But one of the crazy things about it is the times that it did, like that one game out of ten or whatever that it did, like it like would absolutely destroy. Like it would be a game that maybe I shouldn't win, and all of a sudden, I'm in a commanding lead where there's no way they can win. You get that one turn off. Um, so I think Amulet definitely needed to go um, because she. I since since Amulet has gone. Um, because also once eight minutes out, it's like the always haunting feeling of like, oh my god, are they gonna pop? When are they gonna pop that? How am I gonna plan for that? Um, yeah. And then so, but with it with it gone, um, I've never felt like I've been out of control against the Icelander. I've always felt like I can I can keep a neck neck, and maybe it's because I know Icelander. I used to play a ton of Clash Icelander, and so like I know kind of like okay, here's the rotations, here's what to expect. Um, that sort of thing. Um, but she's still like, she's just one of those things where she'll just eat out the win. It's kind of like in CC, I feel like same thing, like where she would, it would be neck and neck and all of a sudden she just blows you up. <laughs> it's yeah. like kind of that same feeling. Of yeah, like that, neck yeah, and Amulet, neck. And... Uh-huh. Amulet was, was definitely the correct ban. Um, I, I don't know if if I yeah I I keep thinking in my head what else could they ban from Icelander, but it's it's very tough. And Amulet was definitely correct. I don't uh, think, but, at, at least in this point, for especially for us in in Clash, I don't think we're going to ban anything else at this point. Like I know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like I feel like she's on the power level that that I like. Like okay, she feels powerful. Yeah. She feels good, but she's not like unbeatable. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is tough. She rewards people that know her really well. Um, you know, she isn't a deck you can just pick up and go. Like when I pick up Icelander, like it takes me a few games. Even though I played her a ton, like it still takes me a few games to like get back into her because I haven't played her in a while. So like I'll pick her up right now and then and be like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> I need to remember <laughs> how this goes and pitch that correctly and, and all of that. And so it's still mm-hmm. it's still not like a for sure. Um let's switch over to Ira. Ira, on the other hand, is a little bit crazy. Um, needs a lot of work. My computer's being slow, so give it a minute. Um, so all of this looks a little bit... Talk to me a little bit about this. So I'm looking at this. I'm seeing Mask of Three Tails. Great. Uh, and then I see Pouncing Paws, and I see Tearing Shuko. I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then I look down here, and I don't see any kitty cats. And so my first thought is like, oh, what's going on here? My assumption is you pop this and then do this is, is kind of my assumption. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah, the math on these two is uh, they're each, they're combined four points of value and there is no better boots and gloves, sadly. Uh, I, I'm de- I was debating playing snaps, but I like the block value. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the the two... The plus two uh, feels pretty good, especially when I'm trying to trigger Mask of Three Tails, and that's yeah. like that's like what what this deck is built around. It's just I'm gonna I'm gonna trigger Mask my one time this game. I will be doing it, uh, and so so Shuko Pouncing Paws, uh, like a turn can be pitch a blue Kadachi Kadachi Pouncing Paws Shuko, and that takes a card um, and provides three points of value. 
Uh, yeah, and then the other there is there is the a, one. Uh, that's six damage over the course of three cards, or like three. So that takes two card, not even two cards. That's one card. Uh, so so it's, yeah, so it's a it's a one card plus two equipment five. Yeah. Um, but usually they're blocking with a three block, and so it's sort of it. Uh, the way I would account for it is it's uh, a one. It's a one card plus two equipment. Three plus a card, uh, which mm-hmm. could be equivalent to six. So yeah. And at that point too, they might be blocking your second Kadachi for two. Possibly, and then you're yeah. like, here's another two. Yeah. In yeah, in which it's in which it's one card plus two equipment for two cards plus one, which is quite yeah. a value play. Uh, this is this yeah, is they're... one of my favorite combos, I think, pouncing pause to Terran Shuko. Mm-hmm. For like they're... for 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 straight up synergy, like I love these two together. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and then there's there's two of Flex Claws. Uh, that was uh, if you look at the oh. reds. Yeah, that oh, was. Yep, right. uh, mm-hmm, that's, oh yeah, so, so you that do have one make, to take out. It makes a tiger. That was a super. Like I was like, what? Uh, what do I really want to play? Do I want to play Flex Claws? Do I want to play Untamed? Uh, which is uh, Crushing Tiger. It's plus one. Mm-hmm. So Untamed is slightly better because you can crack Pouncing Paws and Shiko that turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I decided on Flex Claws because I I want to I want to play the Flex Claws first, um, mm-hmm. and then I can have the Tiger be the next attack for one. Yep. And so I thought that made me a better mask deck, uh, and so that was yes. my big factor. Yeah. Yeah, because if you're 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 taking an equipment or another card with flex cause. Like usually when I see someone dropped on flex cause I'm an IRA. Most of the time I'm trying to block that. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to do it with an equipment. If I, cause at that point it's like, okay, so I, you think of it like this of like, okay, I either block with an equipment or another card, or I'm taking a two damage. Basically like this is basically a one for five. That's mm-hmm. the way I look at it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of the times people have just, not blocked it um and oftentimes the tiger can be zero but it's it's like it's a one for four go again like i just needed more of them mm-hmm. uh and then the other one for four is go agains are bittering thorns and leg tap which yep. are and bittering thorns is just a really powerful card <laughs> um it's one of the best ninja cards i've actually had talks with the clash committee of like do we want to get rid uh-huh. of that does that need to be banned because this feels so good uh so far <laughs> nobody wants to pull the trigger on it yeah i i can't <laughs> say i'm i'm that interested in a bittering thorns ban uh light tap <laughs> is also just randomly value because uh i play blue rising knee thrust and so i can mm-hmm. get the combo off oh yeah uh, yeah mm-hmm. it wasn't as well as that. red which often uh, red can often the red rising knee thrust often just gets arsenaled until I find the leg tap. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, and then, yeah, the other the other one is torrent to tempo, which is usually just kadachi kadachi torrent. Um, mm-hmm. And then it's like I don't really care if it doesn't have go again. It's sometimes it can be a pain if I draw like uh, if I, my hand is blue torrent snatch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they block the torrent, then the snatch has to go to Arsenal, which is a little awkward. But I see right here you're running even bigger than that, which I love that tech. I'm always trying uh-huh. to sneak uh-huh. that in. Yeah, and that one's really good with snatch. Um, I that was how I won uh, the game against Shiana. I was mm. down by I was I was down by like. Okay. Sh- N. No. Okay. Oh well. All right, yeah. uh, no, you can talk about it. This isn't okay. coming out until after the game. But yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, so I was down by ten or so, and I play even bigger than that. I uh, and I had a snatch in hand. I flip a red. I go snatch for. Uh, I think this was a plunder on turn. So I go snatch for seven. Uh, he doesn't block it. The snatches go again. I draw two cards. I think his hand just mm-hmm. didn't block. Uh, and then. Then I com- I just you know I dealt like twenty damage that turn just because <laughs> even bigger than that gives snatch go again. Yep. Uh, and so the the quicken is super relevant also with the like cut down to size humble flying kick those often can benefit from a quicken. 
Mm-hmm. Yep, those aren't those aren't bad. And then so, the yeah. rest of these I'm trying to get out of this. Take forever. Uh the rest of these are blues, zeros, so you can get all those go again, mm-hmm. which is uh phenomenal. yeah. The best one is uh pounce and key because you can crack pause um mm. and then go tiger into key. Mm-hmm. Uh rushing river is also fine because it combos with torrent to tempo. Uh, no mm-hmm. one ever reads this ability. It's it, once in a vast while it'll be relevant uh, because it can swap out a blue for a red. Mm-hmm. Yes, I don't. Th- I don't. I think I've only ever pitched this or blocked with this. I don't think I've okay, ever yeah. actually used uh-huh. it. Yeah, I think I, I've resolved the ability like once or twice. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. the ability is pretty insane. Uh huh. Uh, then we have down here your one little oasis respite. Well, the, yeah, uh, I had <laughs> I had one last slot. Uh, I think it was it was uh, yeah. Actually, the deck is forty two cards, and yeah, so I, I sideboard that. two cards. Um, usually, it's the sigils. Uh, it can also be the cut down to size if mm-hmm. my opponent likes to block. And then the Oasis once in a great while will come in uh, for either Kano or Blaze, um, and uh, not Icelander, I believe. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, the the cut down to sizes I've also quite liked a lot. There's a lot of decks that just want to play four card hands. That's true, and you force someone to block. That the block mm-hmm. at least once. Mm-hmm. I do really like cut down the size. I've removed it from decks that I would put it in. Um just because I feel like in Clash you do block a little bit more than in CC. Mm-hmm. Um just because mm-hmm. you're you basically you have to play like you're playing limited, is is kind of what you are. Because yeah. you, you know you deal yeah. a lot of bulk with like a handful of, of majestics. And in this case, this deck has no majestics. Um Mm-hmm. And so, like, I feel like you just block a little bit more. So, I haven't found cut down to size be as strong um, as I think it is. But I think in mm-hmm. something like this, it makes sense. Like, you're running humble, you get cut down to size. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you're playing against the Zen. You're playing against, you know, anything aggro is pr- yeah, probably definitely. not blocking. So, like, mm-hmm. it makes perfect sense in in here. Yeah, and it's uh, it's another cross draft target, and I like the ability a little tiny bit more than I like the three block off. Uh, what's the three block? Brutal assault mm-hmm. is the two for six three block vanilla, mm-hmm. which some lists are playing. But I think the ability is just a point more. It 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 is relevant once in a great while, uh, especially against like. Azalea, um, which yeah. I would consider to be not an amazing matchup for Ira. Uh, it comes down to just how fast you can flip Red and Ledger. Yeah, which Azalea can can do. I, I one of my first games against Alex, I was playing Azalea. He was playing Fi, and I mm. did three turns in a row with Red and the Ledger. He didn't get to play. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so like it's not yeah. hard to do. Okay. It's really but, not. Cut down to size definitely hurts her. Cut uh, also hurts Bravo a decent amount. Mm-hmm. Um, he wants to just dominate his seven costs and he needs four cards for that. Yep. No, 100%. Uh, yeah, Bravo too. Like he needs, he wants to dominate, but not only that, like he has Starstruck and then things like that. So he needs yes. resources. And if yeah. you can force him to block with that, you're removing a lot of his resources in there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's also a lot of heroes in Clash that have important text boxes. Uh, I think we just we just listed off exactly the same yeah. heroes that it hits. Uh, also, Levia. Mm-hmm. You can just Humble is Levia. really good at Levia, yeah. Uh, Levia another... is actually surprisingly decent in under the right. In the oh right yeah, player. no, definitely, yeah, definitely. Levia is a is a very solid Clash deck. And she, like, I have almost destroyed Levia. I was playing against, who was, I don't even remember, one of our, uh, somebody in the community is big Levia. I don't even remember. Was it, it might have been tie-dye. Um, and they were, I have yet to get the dummy hero to trigger. I haven't tried, but I'm not a big Levia stan. 
and I got him down to one, and he's able to flip her because he had fifteen, whatever it is. Like oh yeah, uh, into into redeemed. Blood debt and the, yeah, into redeemed and went up and then destroyed me because like you know I'm like all right, I'm gonna gas it until I go, and I didn't have a good enough response once we hit redeemed. Yeah, and games. So yeah, it basically, it basically you know got into that game. You know, twenty uh-huh. health essentially. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, another deck that, that Humble can be relevant against, um, is, of course, the, just the Ira Mirror, uh, mm-hmm. just, like, Ira might not block the Humble, and then it just takes away a point of value, it's just a two-card, yep. uh, two, four, seven in that case. Yep. Uh, yeah, and I think, um, that's, uh, so I, I like Crossstrap a lot. Uh, some people aren't on cross strap, which has surprised me. I think I usually run um, the ninja one. What's it? The um, I'm forgetting the name of it. The one that when you make a tiger. No, well, it's not ninja, but it looks like ninja. The one from um, second set, Arcane Rising, the generic one. When you hit, you oh, can pop uh, it in the game of, Best of the first fifth. Yeah, but yeah. So it's not ninja, but I just think ninja. Mm-hmm. Like every time I see, it, I'm like, this is a ninja card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was but what it, I was running in uh in I run bullets because you can't play cross draft there. Mm, yeah, that's right. You can't. Um but yeah, I think I, I it would I like to run that. I do find, well, as much as I, I love that card, uh, I do find um sometimes it can get tricky because then it's like uh you f- you're trying to find the right moment to do it and then you don't do it and then you're at the end of the game and you can't do it because they're at one or two yes. like they're going to block everything yeah. and then you're like yeah, okay i can't actually use this anymore because i'm the type of person where i i wait until the very last moment to use my mm. like that's mm. just i'll block with cards until i'll block with my cards so i don't have to use my equipment i want to block 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 and then i'm that player I know that's not always the best, right? You know, obviously the obvious answer is, well, you do it at the best moment when you need to flip it, which makes sense. Um, but I, I'm notorious for mm-hmm. sometimes waiting too long. So mm-hmm. I love yeah. that card, but I also don't always pull it off. Mm-hmm. Where cross trap, cross trap is just there when you need it, uh, yeah. and it's very it's a great obvious. Ender. Great mm-hmm. game ender. When you're back and forth and you're having to give up cards, and all of a sudden you can come in for a zero for six. Hey, I blocked you, blocked nine. Here's a zero, you know, here's a six cost. Like, I don't have a game. That's brutal. Yeah. And just going also a lot of the time, it's just block of three cards and six, mm-hmm. which feels uh, really good, especially because I play, uh, yeah, with so many reds. Yes, it's I relatively that. often that I can draw an all red hand, and so it's just block with two cards, Arsenal last card, play it, the tumble or whatever, and take mm-hmm. two cards from their hand for one card in a cross trap. That's yep, pretty powerful. That is pretty powerful. But um, yeah, so congratulations! I know you've said this in the community. This is coming out um, after our recording. It's Clash Hub. Um, but we've known for probably about a month now that you've won, um, which has been exciting. Um, we always like to celebrate in the community and then the rest of the world can catch up if they don't want to join our Discord. <laughs> but the last matchup was a Icelander Ira Mirror. Um, mm-hmm. And it was very fascinating. The first game was uh, two Icelanders against each other. I think you played that match incredibly well because Wizard matchups are never easy. Um, yeah, that, that a one's a tough weird. one. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's that's a really like that's probably the most skill like skill intense matchup in Clash. Uh, either that or maybe like possibly like a Kano mirror or something. But mm-hmm. like Icelander mirrors are they're they're a lot of thinking. But yeah, yeah, Kano always throws me off because I never know whose turn it is. Whereas Icelander, mm. it's a little bit easier to tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> with Ken, I'm like, wait, which person? Which turn is this? <laughs> I actually like t- that's like the one of the matchups where I'm like, I I want to play some Talish Shark because I need to understand whose turn this oh, is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're in paper, it's like, wait, I need like a symbol uh-huh. in front of each person in order to know even <laughs> what I'm playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
And then you went in uh, into Ira, and I remember correctly, I think it was against Icelander again. Yeah, uh, uh, that was not a... I expected it to be... Uh, I expected how it would go would be I would win the Icelander mirror, um, and then I would lose uh, the Ira Icelander, because I think Icelander is somewhat favored. Mm -hmm. um, and then it would be down to... Uh, it would just be down to the last game, which would be an Ira mirror. Yep. That's kind of what I expected, but I managed to draw pretty... I think my draws were pretty hot that game. You, yes, you were like aggressive. To, it looked like, mm -hmm. it honestly looked like when Fi won the world championship last year mm -hmm. against Icelander, where he just had hot hands and never let up, and yeah. Icelander could not recover. It was just, mm -hmm. it was just nonstop pressure, pressure, yeah, pressure. Yeah, I think I think all my hands were just down. very solid. Uh, where where often I. Icelander, if you if you don't draw two blues or if you draw no blues, then Icelander just completely shuts you down. But I think every hand was just about one the one or two blues I needed there. Yep, it was every time. But congratulations! Um, is there anything that you would like to say? I want to open up the floor to you to end it out, however you want to end it out as the champion. Uh so I. I I suppose the big thing is um, I'm hoping for the community to grow. Uh, the Clash community, it's, it's pretty small, but I have the feeling it could get bigger. Um, also, there's been some big shakeups just today, uh, and I, <laughs> I'm i excited to see if that if that maybe drives some more people to Clash. Um, so we'll see we'll see what happens. But I'm I think the future Clash is definitely bright. Um, I'm excited to continue being a part of the community. Yep, and we're excited to have you on the Clash League. Um, not only the Clash League, but also on the Clash Committee. We've been hard at work working on um, what we call Brawl, which is basically an adult version of Clash. Just some added-in bonus, like uh, Majestic equipment, which is fun. Um, mm -hmm. So we're, we've been working on that. Theo's been brought in because he's been a great community member and really helping to drive some of that. So, so that expect that towards the end of the year. For anybody watching this, we've already spoken with Talashar. We've spoken with Fabio. So we're just coordinating with them. And uh, But we don't want to take away from the excitement that is Rosetta. So mm -hmm. that'll be towards the end of the year. When everybody doesn't have anything to do, you can check out that format. It'll be up on Talashar and, and everywhere else. So we're excited to showcase that to, to the world and um, just allow you, everybody to have a fun time playing budget uh, budget formats because that's really what we're about is we love Flesh and Blood, but hey, not all of us have $1,000 to drop down on deck. <laughs> I, I, that's obviously way out there. The decks I play don't cost that much, but um, <laughs> even when they're all fully built. But um, I'm I'm just teasing everybody a bit well yeah yeah pick up pick up your your the hundred dollar storm striders well there's yeah. no hundred dollars well, right i know i i play lexi so my deck is only a few hundred dollars and i've been collecting mm -hmm. for a while so I've, oh, okay. I've been enjoying ll so um it might have been a thousand dollars worth of stuff that i've put into it but not it's not worth that now um, but we we love uh, the community and thank you guys so much for really just kind of coming around this man saint built this up um and he handed it off to me and i really just wanted to create a fun online community kind of reminiscence of the fun days that we had in the pandemic playing online um and just enjoy like just have fun like i i don't know about you theo but i, I struggle in the competitive scene and it's not that like i'm not great but that's what it comes down to but I can enjoy games, but it's a little too competitive for me. And so I just wanted to sit down and basically meet new people like I would in an armory, uh, meet new faces, make new friends, and just enjoy the game of Flesh and Blood that was created for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the having a Discord server uh, is a, it's a super big thing. Uh, all my lo my local scene has a discord server and that really brings us together but definitely the definitely uh, everyone check out the clash bash discord server um be linked down and, below <laughs> mm -hmm. 
But um, yeah, I think that's that's about it for me. Yeah, thank you, Theo. Appreciate your time. You have a wonderful night, and I'm excited to see what happens in the next Clash Bash. We got Rosetta coming up. Yeah, it'll be Clash Bash. Usually starts a week after set releases. Give you time to figure out what you want to play. You want to test out new decks, that sort of thing. So keep your eyes out for that. If you're interested, uh, there is a sign up sheet down below um, that you can sign up to play. That what we do is we do one game a week. Um, and then that'll lead up for about six weeks. I'll lead up to the top eight. Let me cut for top eight and uh, just battle it out and best of three. So everybody have a good day and we'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.